Welcome to my Open Studio 2020. I have been painting full time for 15 years now and I'm taking this opportunity to look back at work I have done in the early days and how there is a common thread running through these images with some hidden gems in my collection. Part of this previously unseen work is a lot of delicate drawings and paintings. I also am um, in the process of just moving back into my studio and I really like to be very organized. However, I have found gems among the piles, like this lovely watercolor. I'm always heartened by these because about 10 years ago, I sat down deliberately to learn to draw. It wasn't something I had mastered the art of during my five years in art college. Everybody told me it was something one could learn and I decided I was going to apply myself. And apply myself, I really did. And one of the drawings I focused on was this one, which is done by sight sizing. And I must have spent a fortnight on it. But I kept it because it reminds me that when one puts one's mind down to anything as possible. And then this one. Now, this one indicates a problem that I have, which is that I'm, I have to sit while other people stand as they draw. So the view is at times challenging. But nevertheless, I have continued my life drawing, and this is one I did earlier this year before COVID set in. If nothing else, it helps me to be really useful when it comes to moving furniture. Because with my eye, I can guess within a millimeter if a piece of furniture is going to fit or not. That has become useful in moving into my renovated studio where I've discovered other gems like this one. This was the first painting I created when I decided to try painting again 25 years after I went into art college. I could face taking up a paintbrush once more. And this is the same field a few months later. As you will discover, I am drawn to flooded fields. is another one. I saw it from the top deck of the bus and came back to paint it. The first thing I did was take a photograph and before I had even finished the sun went behind the clouds momentarily and this is the scene which wasn't at all what I bargained for but I held out the sun came back and I painted this lovely painting. In fact I returned many times to the same place. And this is a very large painting I currently have. This is the painting at an early stage and I've become more interested in dynamic design. I'm fascinated with colour and particularly with what I see every day, which is this field. In this painting, the sky is heavy and purple with rain. Later the same day, it might look something like this, entirely different, but still about to rain. It fascinates me no end how much this scene that I see every day changes moment to moment. I have done a lot of painting around this area and I used to be a familiar sight in the woods and I can see from this painting that I did maybe 12 years ago, my interest in shapes and color and form remains the same, but the way I've painted has changed. This is the kind of painting I moved towards, which is painted from memory rather than on location.
The move from painting on plein air or on site into the studio is something that was forced upon me by circumstances, but it's something that over the last four years or so I have embraced. And I can say that while I do miss the great outdoors, there is something really exciting about working in this new way and bringing with me all the experience that I have had of battling with the elements and fighting with the wind. And being on the spot. From Wexford to Westport, Cornwall to the Canaries, I have enjoyed painting, but most of all, I have traversed the bogs and looked deep into the holes and found gems there. I particularly liked this painting and I felt as it was painted during a heat wave that that influenced how it turned out. But I've been painting bog holes for a very long time and this was one of my first paintings in the bog and I spent many weeks completing it. I even framed it. I'm interested in strong shapes in texture and in excitement in a painting, and that hasn't changed over the years. Looking at this scene, you mightn't think much of it, but I remember working on it and being very interested in the, the pattern that was being made by the incoming tide and that yellow spot, the field in the distance, when the sun shone on it, it really glowed against the dark skies, which were of course reflected in the water. But my battle with this painting was against the tide and I was quickly losing the pattern that so attracted me in the beginning. But the yellow spot remained. Further up the coast of Wexford in Curratlow, I battled the winds and created what I consider a really beautiful painting, high in texture. I even incorporated the sand from the beach into the painting. In truth, I had very little choice, as it also got into my sandwiches and under my toenails. At the end of the day, quite late in the evening, I would say about eight o'clock, I got to wash my feet in the shallow water and the sun came out. And it was rather lovely. I have to tell you that as an artist, it doesn't get much better than this. You have to remember that it's not at all easy for me to get my feet into a wash hand basin, let alone rub them together at the same time. This is because I haven't mastered the art of levitation. Not yet, anyway. I think this is a good time to leave you. And I will do so with a random selection of some of the work that's currently available in this virtual hidden gems selection that were revealed because of my move to my new space. This is also probably a good time to tell you that a painting is not just for Christmas. A good painting is a companion for life. Thank you.